Tenakoto, 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 kato. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christy Hill, and I'm the New Zealand Army Lessons Manager. In the following presentation, I'd like to speak to you about our experience of driving change, some of our success stories, and a brief overview of how far we've come and where we are heading. Firstly, I'd like to thank our hosts for inviting me to the AFAC Lessons Management Forum 2017. I am truly sorry that I could not be there in person. However, the fiscal restrictions are upon us and we've had to come up with an alternative solution. Thank you to Lisa Jackson and Mark Cuthbert for the invitation to speak and to Nicola Lawrence for coordinating and providing the option of speaking via video. I know that all of the hard work for these types of events happens behind the scenes and hopefully this video link and Skype will not let us down today. Inshallah or as they say here in New Zealand, she'll be all right. So as you can hear from my accent, I am not a true Kiwi. Born and bred in Zimbabwe, lived and worked in the UK for 10 years and then moved to New Zealand to be the New Zealand Army Lessons Manager just under six years ago. As a newbie, it has its advantages and you seem to learn more about the country along the way. I've learned that New Zealand has a land area larger than the UK I've learned that New Zealand controls three times the airspace of the United States. I've learned that we have the largest sea territories of any country. I've learned that New Zealand has a population of about 4.7 million people and about 20 million sheep. Now that is not a bad number when Australia has 74 million sheep and 23.5 million people. For those of you sitting in the auditorium trying to work out the maths, New Zealand has a ratio of 1 to 7 compared to Australia, which is 1 to 3. Other than this great competitive spirit that we have between our two countries, the reason I'm telling you this is by the metrics, we are not just a small country, but one of significance for the region. New Zealand has a reputation as people who think differently and challenging the status quo seems to be the norm. As a country that was only inhabited by human beings over a thousand years ago, the first people to arrive had to be explorers, pioneers, and have a robust attitude towards adventure. To survive, you had to innovate and be curious about life. Failure was inevitable for these settlers, and in order to survive, you had to fail, you had to innovate, you had to learn, and you had to adapt. That pioneering spirit still exists today, more than ever, and the New Zealand Army is no exception. Whether it is a practical solution to a problem or overcoming resources or personal limitations, as an organization against the odds, we make it work time and time again. I can honestly say from my experience here so far that the New Zealand Army has a reputation for punching well above our weight on many occasions when the odds are against us. One of the biggest issues that I have found is that the people who need convincing are more ourselves and the people we work alongside. The New Zealander, our peers, our leaders, and our colleagues do not always represent the boldness or putiki spirit to make change happen. Even though they have the skills, the innovations, and the best practices right in front of us, that internal narrative kicks in of self-doubt and tentativeness to lead change. Many of you would have heard of tall poppy syndrome and I can tell you it is alive and kicking over here. Are we afraid of someone else succeeding? Or is it a form of arrogance? Or are we afraid to stick our heads above the parapet? Are we afraid of failing? I'll get back to this later on in the presentation. So what is our story of change in the New Zealand Army? To put it into context, four years ago, the Chief of Army published the Army 2020 strategy that outlined five supporting themes. Creating platforms to support learning lessons and professional development was part of theme four, trusted professionals. This was a direct task to our organization. The Adaptive Warfighting Center, 
that I'm part of consists of army lessons, simulation, doctrine and professional military education. For an organization and a small organization, where do we start? How do we make a significant difference to such a large organization? How do you promote organizational change and what needs to be done to make that change? These are all questions we started with in the beginning. So we started at the why. As an organization of approximately 6,800 full-time personnel, army reserves, civilian personnel, and volunteers, every observation, recommendation, idea, concept, and opinion counts. The small can influence the large. In Maori, the concept is that iti, the small and precious, can transform nui, the large and important. Why? We need to evolve to face the challenges of the future. In order to make that happen, we need to learn how to evolve. First and foremost, we need to think and look at how we think about a problem. Now, I know you're probably saying to yourself, well, we all think, and that is very true. The average person thinks about 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. But how often do we make time to think about solving a problem? actually critically thinking about the cause of the problem and not just symptoms of the problem. As William James, the American philosopher and psychologist once said, a great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging their prejudices. Like so many of you here today, and I've, se I've seen an issue being reported and that same issue has already been reported 5, 10, 15 years ago, and it keeps on coming up. What is the real problem? And what are the trends related to that problem? What are our own mental processes to analyze and make decisions? If this is something that you're interested in, I recommend the book Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. What are our own cognitive biases and heuristics? As leaders with multiple threads of information coming our way on a daily basis, are we making decisions based on strong emotions rather than objective data? Are our personal experiences clouding our judgment and our willingness to change? Think back to your own organization and are you promoting time to think and really think? Another element of how we evolve is promoting professional curiosity or intellectual curiosity. How do we promote an environment or workspace where people go searching for answers, an environment where you can find what you're looking for and you keep on searching to learn more? Far too often in the military environment, we work in our own little bubble, too busy working or looking after our team to consider our own professional curiosity. Promoting professional curiosity is critical to change and can promote the following. Intellectual quotient, IQ, the ability to enhance your working memory and the way our mental capacity deals with temporary and long-term information. Emotional quotient, EQ, studies have proven that the more we know about a situation, for example, situational awareness versus situational understanding, then the less inclined we are to have stress and anxiety in those situations and the better we cope with those situations. Curiosity Quotient, CQ. CQ leads to higher levels of investment in learning, innovation and an aptitude for improvement, that personal investment in a project or information. We use professional curiosity platforms on a daily basis and often do not fully utilize the capacity and reach of these platforms. 
These platforms range from the common social media to business forum, blogs, podcasts, and publications. But what else can we do within our own organization to enhance professional curiosity? Before action reviews or BARs are extremely valuable before planning for a training event or going on an operation. Review the observations and lessons from the last time and see if you can avoid making the same mistakes this time round. For example, we filmed a 30 minute video of the commander from the New Zealand contingent that deployed on Operation Winston to Fiji in 2016. He openly spoke about best practices employed on the, deplo on the deployment and areas to improve. With cyclone season almost upon us, personnel will watch the video before they start planning. The video has definitely had an impact and in my personal experience probably more so than the written report and I'm more than happy to share the link with you to share the learning. This is just one of the many ways that we as an organization are looking at learning within the think, learn, adapt construct. So lastly and finally, what do we do to adapt? So this is where the rubber hits the road and making change really happens. Unfortunately, this is also where people expect a miraculously change of behavior overnight. Often, often significant change of behavior can take time and in some cases years for cultural change to take place. By analyzing cultural change in popular examples, such as the All Blacks abysmal tour to South Africa in 2004, that significantly changed the culture of the organization, to Ford Motor Company in 2008, who were just months away from running out of cash. Both of these are examples highlight the value of leadership by it from the very start and the value of analyzing what is the real problem and not just the cause. An example that I can give you from the New Zealand Army is in 2004, the Adaptive Warfighting Center, my organization, supported the launch of the Land Forces SOPs. This supported all of Land Forces operating on the same processes, procedures, reports and returns. This resulted in a total rewrite reviewing every single process. So why do we do what we do? We reviewed the incident and then worked our way back from that incident. What information did the com commanders really need to know from that incident? Whilst doing this activity, we realized that some of the old processes that we adopted were not so relevant today. Technology had moved on but it was still important to remember how to do it manually or via analog. But one of the great things about doing this process is we realized that we were duplicating work. This activity allowed us to streamline processes and provide clarity to why we do certain processes. We facilitated workshops with leadership to get buy-in and input. This resulted in a level of professional curiosity from the junior levels to understand the Land Forces SOPs and learn about coalition partners and how they work. The project does not stop here and will continue to develop in the next couple of months and years. The next Land Forces SOP review is taking place in 2018 and it has actually been instigated by leadership itself. Change will happen. In summary, the evolution of our organization starts with why. It is the soldier on the ground that is curious and innovates. It starts with the commander and manager who wants to change and challenge the status quo. It starts with the leader who wants to lead and inspire 
And ultimately, we need to evolve to face the challenges of the future. In order to make that happen, we need to learn how to evolve. As the problems we are facing on operations are becoming more complex, multifaceted and extremely complicated, we need to partner not just with those traditional partners that we have always felt comfortable with. We need to embrace a whole range of partners from industry, academia, non-governmental agencies and the like and learn ways to build trust between us so that we can get the information flow and we can find successes from others. Lastly, do not underestimate the effects of professional curiosity on your organization. In the right environment, curiosity grows, it duplicates, and it becomes contagious. I challenge you to grow and develop those tall poppies within your organization who will challenge the status quo and grow the organization. Besides, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it is the size of the fight in the dog that counts. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for this opportunity and I look forward to your questions during the Q&A session. Thank you.